What's up, guys? It's your boy Tim from TestDemi.com. We're live and direct back out of hey, hey, hey here we go, H Town, baby, Houston, Texas. What's up, y'all? Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful, awesome week. We back. We live. We're direct. We're about to hit it today. All right. So today, what we're gonna be doing? We're gonna be doing part two. Of yeah, 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 you guessed it, how to get started in automated testing. We're going to do part two, not part one, part two. But yo, before we do that, there are a few things I want to cover. Just one or two housekeeping items before we get into part two of how to get started automation testing. Let's look at it. First of all, I want to thank our first person that ever made a comment on the test demi YouTube channel, what's up to Corey? And not only did Corey leave a comment, but guess what? He gave some kind of constructive criticism in a very good way. That's the whole point, right? Because like I mentioned, we're all on this journey together. We're trying to go from a manual testing position to kind of hit it and run the automation test industry. Like I told you guys, this is a movement. I'm trying to get like about 10,000 Manual testers to automation, you know, but if you can get one on board, you can get 10,000. That's my mentality. It's all about the mentality. So anyway, back to Corey. Thank you once again, Corey, for commenting, right? And what he said, he was like, yo, Tim, it's not Python. Python. There's no such thing. What is Python? He said it's Python, like the snake. And he's right. He corrected me. And I appreciate that because that's what we need on this journey. As you see me, guys, you guys see me dropping more videos. I'm learning automation testing. We're all on this journey together. We're about to be experts. We're about to really start making it and really killing it in this industry. So we all, you know, here for each other for like the checks and balances. So if you guys see some things I'm not doing wrong, doing right, pardon me, or you think things I can do better and improve, let me know. If you think, if you feel that things I'm doing right, say, yo, Tim, that's great. Keep it going. All right. You know, because I know that a lot of us that are like-minded, we're all trying to be on the same page and we're trying to win together. Just want to drop that out there. And once again, like Corey did, he left a comment. If you haven't, please leave a comment too, man, so we can get some good interaction going to make it, all right? All right. All right, so let's kind of jump into it. So let me do a recap real quick, right? Because I don't, I feel you just can't really begin to jump and run, 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 run without taking a step back and see, okay, where did we come from, all right? It's kind of like a map. You want to know where you came from so where you know where you're going if you ever get lost. So part one, how to get started in automation testing. What do we recap? Who can guess? Real quick, huh? Uh, you still think it? Uh, you should have been on top of your P's and Q's. All right, part one, we did. Number one, first thing you want to do is do a market assessment, right? See what the industry is saying. See what the market is saying. All right, part two, excuse me, number two, point number two is pick an object-oriented programming language. Not just any programming language, make sure it's object-oriented. And I have my reasons. If you haven't seen it, go back to part one, watch the videos and get the in insight, get the good scoop and the insight, inside story, all right? We decided we're going to go with Python on our journey. Python. All right, Python. Check out there. Right? Appreciate it, boy. Homie Curry. Number three. Third thing to do when you want to get started in automation testing. Either your manual tester background or you just want to get an automation testing. You, you have no QA background. The third thing you want to do, practice, practice, practice. You have to practice. I know Alan Iverson said practice? Practice? We're talking about practice? Not the game. Not the game. Practice? No, no, no. Iverson is great, but yo, if you want to get great in automation tests, you want to get started when you get in the door, you got to practice the object-oriented language, programming language you decide to pick. We decided to go with Python, practice yours, all right? You have to be practice. You have to practice. That's only way you're going to get great. The fourth thing you want to do when you want to get started in uh, automation testing is you have to learn or pick an automation tool. We decided to go with Selenium WebDriver as an automation tool. The reason it's an open source tool, all right? Market assessment number one, two, pick up object-oriented programming language, OOP. Three, practice, practice, practice. Four, pick or learn an automation tool. We decided to go with Selenium Web Drive. I'm going to leave the link down below for part one. If you, if you haven't watched it, please stop this right now. Stop watching part two right now. Go back to part one and check it out. All right, you're going to be glad you did. All right, today, part two. How to get started in automation testing. The first thing you want to do, we should say number five, but really we're just going to keep it simple. This is part two. So number one and part two is learn to build an automation framework. 
You have to learn build automation framework. A lot of those jobs out there for automation testing, what they're looking for are people that know how to build automation frameworks. Automation frameworks are a way to make your test cases reusable, uh, maintainable. Uh, it's pretty much a framework. And, you know, the difference between uh, a framework and a library when it comes to programming, when you have a library and you have your code, you're coding, right? You're coding on your IDE, which is an integrated development environment. You're coding or wherever you're coding at, you're coding. Uh, when you want to call libraries, you go out there and call the libraries of the module. You call them into your code. Now, when you have a framework, a framework is something that very smart guys, programmers, guys that are very smart, they've designed a framework that all you have to do is now you just plug in your code to different parts of that framework. It's the same thing in automation. Once you begin to build an automation framework, the reason companies want that, it's maintainable, it's reusable. Anybody can come and build on the automation framework. You can get automation test cases built much, much faster. And we're going to be learning how to build an automation framework. We're going to learn how to understand an automation framework, analyze an automation framework, and be great at it, all right? Now, to get you guys get started on part uh, number one, on part two of how to get started in automation testing, I have two automation frameworks that are open source. Again, remember what I talked about open source. If you want to get insight, please go back to part one. Open source. The great thing is when it's open source, it's not a commercial product. A lot of companies are going to be using it, okay? Robert Framework is an automation framework you want to know about. It's Python-based, okay? So if you're going with Python as the OOP, object-oriented programming language you decided to pick from part one, like we talked about, you know, Robert Framework is good for Python users or programmers. So if you're, if you're a manual tester, you want to get started, learn automation framework, Look into the Robert framework if you're going with Python as your OOP, all right? If you want to go to Java, because we're just doing our thing here, we're going Python, pick what you're comfortable with, okay? If you want to go with a Java-based automation framework that's already set, you want to learn it, it's Serenity. It's an open source tool, framework that's a great tool to look into, and it does the same thing. So Robert framework, Python, Serenity for Java. There's so many more out there. Those are just a few we're going to, you know, I want to just mention and get started. We're more than likely, we're going to learn the Robo Framework, but we're also not only going to learn the Robo Framework, we're going to learn to build our own automation framework. That's going to distinguish us because a lot of people out there, they might be good at using the Robo Framework, but we're going to know how to build an automation framework from scratch. That's going to distinguish us and get paid more dollars in your pocket. All right, let's go. All right, the second thing we want to do when you want to get started in automation uh, testing number the second thing you want to do is you want to begin a side project okay so as you're learning everything you learn how to program you've practiced you pick an automation tool where in this case we're going with selenium web, web driver i uh, begin to build a side project the side project is very simple you know pick your favorite website it can be google facebook amazon um instagram uh, any uh, e-commerce websites you shop whatever the case might be pick a particular website or web page remember selenium web driver is using the uh the module, the Selenium WebDriver tool to drive the uh, actual browser, okay? Pick one and begin to automate the website. Test it. Build automation framework, build test cases, build a page object model like we talked about in part one. Do all these things and build yourself a side project, okay? Because the thing is you're going to want to have something to show recruiters, especially if you don't have an experience with automation. You have to have something to show them your proof. The proof is in the pudding and proof is in the results. Proof is in the project you have built. What can you build? What can you do? Because you can show them the interview, just whip it out and say, yo, this is what I've done. Look at my project. And you kind of walk them through the automation framework, your page object models, the test cases you built in Selenium Web Driver using Python or whatever you decide to use, but build or begin to do a side project, okay? We're going in sequence here. Part one, we mentioned four things. Here we mentioned two things so far. Build an automation framework. Number two, build begin a side project. And if you're if you're saying, yo, Tim, please point me, help me. I don't know where to start. Well, I have something for you, okay? Uh, there's a there's a uh, ongoing uh, Mozilla Selenium Python project which they're using uh, page object models. If you don't know about page object model, look it up. That's part of your homework to kind of learn and grow. Uh, Mozilla is doing a Python Python project, okay? And it's page object model based. And again. It's an open source. All you have to do is go to the link. I'm going to leave the link below. Check it out. Get a part of that project. Go to GitHub. Grab that project and get engaged, okay? So you can have something to put on your resume, your profile, and you can get in the door and get getting paid and get taken to the next level, okay? Uh, first thing I mentioned is learn to build an automation framework. Begin a side project. The third thing is now after you begin to build your side project, if you built it, the next thing is publish your project, okay? So you want to put it out there. Let them see it. So we're going to make it more practical. What do you do? Put it on GitHub. 
All right, check out GitHub.com. Load your uh, source code on there. Load your automation framework. Load your project um, directories, everything you have, the project structure. Put it on GitHub, okay? Check it out. The next thing is um, you want to do, once you're talking about publish your project, put it on GitHub. The next thing is start a blog, right? So you, you'd be surprised. Some recruiters, managers, uh, companies might go on there and see it. So start a blog of what you're learning. Begin to document your experience. Type it up. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be perfect. Just get started. Start a blog. It's pretty simple. Start a blog. Begin to put your stuff out there. You want to begin to publish it with different avenues. GitHub is one avenue so they can see your source code and the structure of your project and what you've been working on. Uh, blog the information, what you're learning to begin to document your steps, okay? Uh, real quick, the next thing you want to do, again, we're still talking about publishing your project you built. The next is teach it. Do not be intimidated. You know, if you want to grow, somebody somebody once said, teach what you know, and that's how you truly grow. Okay? Teach what you know, and that's how you truly grow. So begin to teach it. Again, you don't have to be an expert. If you can spell Python, I'm not trying to be funny or anything. If you can spell Python, teach it to somebody, okay? If you know about Selenium Web Driver, I guarantee you that somebody out there that knows, that knows less than you do, they're trying to get into the QA space. They're trying to get into the automation space. So as you begin to teach this, you're growing because it forces you to learn and conceptualize it and comprehend it. So you can be able to pass it on each one, teach one. We're getting 10,000 manual testers for automation. So teach it, okay? And the final thing you want to do, actually not the final thing, sorry, I'm looking at my, wow, my notes, a lot of stuff here. The next thing is you begin to leverage the community feedback. So what do I mean by that? So when you become... If you're a programmer, some of you that have done some programming before, uh, what they do, they have something called code review. So you code something, somebody reviews, it gets feedback and say, okay, you know, you follow the standard, standard, and this and that. Same thing, right? Leverage the community feed, uh, community uh, uh, automation community, even programming community. Uh, go to Reddit. Go to the Reddit, a uh, proper uh, Reddit sub, uh, subreddit. It can be the Python one or Java or Selenium or QA or the uh, software testing, or go to LinkedIn, join a LinkedIn group, go to Google, join the Google groups, uh, join a meetup, right? So whenever you begin to program and code and build your automation framework and your automation test cases in Python or Java, again, we're using Python, begin to show people the more experience, let them give you feedback on how you can improve and get better. And the final thing you want to do is link it all up, okay? We talked about under the pub publisher project category, GitHub, start a blog, teach it, leverage the community feedback, and finally, link it all up. Put it on your resume, put it on LinkedIn, uh, put it on all your different profiles, on your blog, link your GitHub, uh, put your GitHub link on your blog, uh, put that information on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, link everything all up so if somebody sees one part, it links them somewhere else, right? Somebody once said, all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to Rome. So when everybody's fine, when anyone is finding information about you, it all leads back to Rome, you and what you have done, okay? Final thing we mentioned, learn to build automation framework, begin a side project, publish your uh, project. We mentioned four things under there, five things under there. And the fourth thing you want to do in part two of learning how to get started in automation testing is never stop learning. Somebody once said, if you ain't learning, you die. Not a physical debt, but a mental debt. We want to get you sharp, and we want to keep you sharp, 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 sharp. You want to say, Tim, what do I have to learn? Well, learn about continuous integration with Jenkins. Learn about DevHops. Learn about cloud-based uh, testing. Uh, read books. Go to our conferences. Get better. Never stop learning. So with that, that's part two of how to get started in automation testing. Hope you learn. We're going to have some more videos. We're actually going to start showing some actual walkthroughs with Python and Selenium Web Driver. We need to build things. So if you want to be a part of this journey, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, button before below. Leave a comment, and let's all grow together. If, you, if there's something you feel you want to learn, a topic you want me to cover, please uh, mention it. Okay, and also, please check out testdemy.com. That's my website, T-E-S-T-D-E-M-Y. I have free videos on there, free tutorials, blog content that you can learn. Grow, 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 grow. Feed your brain, feed your mind, grow, and take it to the next level, all right? So, I will see you guys in the next faces. Till then, I love you guys. Checking out. Holla. Tim Testdemy.